to Gospel Diaries. Man, this is a show that is strategically designed for uh, your gospel music appetite. Here today, I'm in Markham, Illinois, a uh, suburb of Chicago, <laughs> with yeah. a living legend, Evan Yancey. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How are you? I'm doing good. For, for those that do not you? know, <laughs> this <laughs> is the late, great Marvin Yancey's brother. Are yeah. you? Were you older or younger? Younger. I, we were one year apart. One year apart. Mm. So, of course, we're going to delve into his gospel diaries. But before we get started, would you please take a moment to subscribe and share this content from my heart to yours. My God, how are you doing? I'm blessed to be here with you. <laughs> really? You've been on the battlefield for quite some time now. Oh, man. I'm 71 years are old. Are you really? Yes, sir. You I don't am. look 71. Well, thank God. <laughs> wow. So, so your parents, what, what were your parents? Robert now? and Ann Yancey. Really? Really? Yeah. My, my father was minister, Reverend Robert J. Yancey, who... Uh, Pastor in St. Louis, and then he came to Chicago. He's mm -hmm. actually from Memphis. Then he came to Chicago and became the uh, assistant pastor of Greater Harvest Baptist Church. Your father? Yeah. Under uh, Reverend, Reverend Lewis' body? That was Reverend Body's assistant pastor. Interesting. Yeah, for years. But Not when right. you were born, were, were you? He were, was still the assistant pastor. So you, when you were born, you were going, <laughs> you were going, first of all, you were raised at home because yeah. mom and daddy raised you at home, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But as far as church, you were attending Greater Harvard. Oh, yeah. Let's every, talk. every Sunday, me and my brother, Marvin, and my older sister, Judy. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, Let's we talk. sat on the front row mm -hmm. every every Sunday. Let's... And my mama mm -hmm. um, sang in the choir. Mm -hmm. my, uh, Ann Yancey, everybody called her Mama Ann Yancey. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was an operatic soprano. Really? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Reverend Lewis' body. Oh, my God. First of all, that ministry, well, everything started for us there. Mm -hmm. You know, our hope in Christ, our inspiration for gospel music and the word and all of that started right there. My brother it was inspired there to uh, start playing. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to stand up on the organ. Uh, and with his little self at four mm -hmm. and five, mm -hmm. and just watch uh, Robert Wooten or Joe Hill. Yeah, wow, you were there or with Joe, Robert Wooten. Joe. Henderson Joe played. Henderson. Yeah. Joe yeah. Henderson, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't he play and for Edward the Edward Robertson. Yeah. Didn't Joe Henderson play for the Argo Singers at one point back? Yeah. Right. And yeah. And, yeah, and Eddie, then Willie Webb and Willie all, Webb, yeah. All the, whoever was anybody. Well, first of all, Greater Harvest, Reverend Body was that that's an institution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. Uh they fed hundreds of thousands of people every day at really? that church. Really? Oh yeah. They were canned goods. You would come in and get food. That was his ministry, and he was the first Baptist Church of God in Christ mm -hmm. coach. He taught holiness. Right. Robert Anderson was the minister of music. Uh, there was uh, Edward Robinson on the piano, Joe Henderson, and the rest of the, the, the uh, choir. Oprah, Opo, uh, she was a lead Opal, singer. Okay. I can't think of her last name. Of course, Mama. It was, oh, man, Mahalia would come by. You remember seeing Mahalia at Great Heart? Well, uh, she was my auntie. What? Well, she was, that's what we called her, <laughs> Auntie Hayes. Because uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. she lived across the street from where we lived. Mm -hmm. I mean, across the alley. Mm -hmm. And my sister I, and my brother, we would go over her house and practice, rehearse on her mics. What? Oh, father, my father could just sing. Your man. father could sing too? Oh, my. I'll tell you how good he could sing. Please. Mahay used to beat him with her purse. What? In the pulpit. <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, music just came in a sense. It was innate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. natural in some from your From your experience, were they a lively chick? Like, did they dance? Oh, baby. Are in, the you, huh? in the 50s. In the 50s. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> what? Did they dance? I just said it was 
Great Harvest Baptist Church of God in Christ. Okay. <laughs> so y'all damn. Oh, all out on the street. What? Oh, from the choir stand to the from the window to the wall. Did he let y'all dance all night? <laughs> oh, they would tarry at Greater Harvest all night. Uh, prayer service, teaching went on, sh uh, shouting all night long. They used to have blankets where they had to throw over people. And 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 they folks was just, the Holy Spirit would just come in, folks would dance and shout all. Oh, I don't care what time of night you come there, you'd hear somebody just praising God. Mm -hmm. They had one of the world's greatest choirs, of course, mm -hmm. you know, and then Reverend Body would teach holiness. Really? Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is it? Precious memories. Huh? Oh, how, <laughs> how they linger. linger. How they oh, flood my, my soul. Oh, yeah. My yeah. God. Young people from everywhere came to Greater Harvest, mm -hmm. as they still do. Mm -hmm. Isn't it something? <laughs> it's wonderful, <laughs> man. My, my father uh, organized. No, he when he left Great Harvest, he was called to a church called First Gideon, which was on 40, 41st and Perere. Yeah, and he passed it there for several years. Mm. Um, and uh, and they we, they had a great choir over there too. Uh, uh, as my Doris Sykes was in that choir, Melvin Smothers. Change their name to True Light or True Light? No, Reverend True Light was Reverend B. F. Paxton. Paxton, and they went there too. Yeah, they left my father wow. after my father left. But first Gideon, he went and organized Fountain of Life. Really? 19, I, it had to be between 57 and 59. Oh, my God. And he organized <laughs> the church at the Powell Funeral Home. At the Powell? Powell Funeral Powell. Home on okay. State Street, 47th and State. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then we moved to 42nd and Evans. Mm -hmm. That's where the church first started. And actually, we lived upstairs up over the church. But that is also where, uh, before there was a Jubilee Showcase or Al Abrams Show, Gospel Show, the uh, Helen Robinson Youth Choir, they used to come oh. every Sunday morning and they would host uh, a gospel show with Audrey Pettis on the, uh, as their minister of music. Right there at Fountain of Light, six o'clock in the morning, program in Chicago. <clears throat> That's where you would come and let the people know you were in town. Was that on the radio? At, at, on the radio. That was, was on was the, the radio. Uh, was uh, the at, Pleasance there at that particular time? The Pleasance. Was it Jesse Pleasance? I don't remember. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I remember Audrey Pettis and, and Jeanette Robinson. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of her? Yes. That's Brian Jones' mm -hmm. mother. Yes, yeah, she used to sing the openings. Boy, that's a well, saint. Uh, uh, that's His a grace is sufficient. Yeah, that's a saint. No, they used to come up. Oh, yeah, she used to sing that too. Good yeah. God Almighty. Oh, God, yeah. But that's when Marvin and I first fell in love with. Uh, we saw all those young people sing. Really? The Helen Robinson Youth Choir? Yeah. Interesting. And, and it won't be long. I'm going to try to make Also saw that more on that broadcast. You would uh, uh, at uh, at Final Life, the one that Helen Robinson Youth Choir was the uh, what, host so choir. It was a radio right, show radio, that okay. came right. on okay. every Sunday mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. I think it was on for maybe about a half an hour or an hour. But the Soulsters, the original Soulsters, yeah. would would say, yeah. um, 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 What's a Joe Lagun? Come on, Mighty Cloud. Yeah, yeah, we would see them. The yeah. Caravan. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm. Everybody. The, all the old uh, gospel groups. The Argo Singers. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> love. You know, when, 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 uh, 
was really intriguing. The the the, the, uh, gay, uh, the, the gay singer. The gay singer. Yeah. yeah. The Duncan. Duncan Ayers. Duncan Ayers. Oh, okay. So <laughs> yeah. Jane Cleveland. James Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, show, show, show no foot stuff in gospel. Listen, I was, huh? I was just at uh, Birmingham and I went to 16th Street, uh, the, the church of the bombing. Mm. And uh, we were going upstairs to the sanctuary and uh, the, the stairs, they had that squeak. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, had to, I didn't know everybody was listening, <laughs> yeah. but I said, this sounds like a church. You remember that squeaky sound? Oh, do I? Stairs? Do I? I was like, wow, on man, the wood floor. Like, that's church. Yeah, that's church. On the wood floor. <laughs> When this old ship, when this old ship is sail, yeah. is about, is about to, oh, come on. And yeah, and a, a bunch of after school stuff for kids. Wow, a for black ten, woman. Yeah. Late 50s. Yes. Advocating for African-American For Afro-American, Afro-American kids. Yeah. Wow. Brian yeah, Jones, and, and they were, your grandmother, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. we honor the spirit of your grandmother. Yes, God, yeah. Wow, you, you know. matter too, huh? Oh God! Was yeah, like, what, what, what was the characteristics? glowing, really? illuminating. Mm -hmm. She was a beautiful woman, wow. and uh, the prettiest smile you ever want to see. Really? Oh yeah, wow. yeah. It was just something celestial about her. I, I like her. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. Now you and Marvin actually uh, was a part of the choir. No, okay. No, we were we were too young to be in the choir. Okay. We we were like. Yeah. Uh, eight, nine years old, you know, but that uh, whetted our appetite, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. sing. And so together, her, uh, Marvin and I, and my sister, Judy, which was the first songwriter in the family, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we started singing together, mm -hmm. emulating other groups and choirs mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that that's in our house. And mama would teach us different songs. Oh. Every day, every day, she teaches a different song. You know, one song that that that, that stands out to me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guess uh -uh. which rendition I'm thinking of. Tis the old ship of God. <laughs> <laughs> what am I thinking about? Uh, uh, my head? No. Who? J. Robert Bradley? Are you serious? What? Oh, fellowship. Is he, is he right fellowship. Is he serious? You thinking about fellowship? Really? Yeah. Oh, you I'm talking about Milton, Milton Bronson. Bronson. Yeah. Really? See? Okay. See? Wow, it's just that just does something. Milton Bronson. It does something to me because like hearing a song like that, you know, that you are even though you are lived in the north, you wasn't you wasn't refrained from oh, no. uh, racial terror. Oh, uh, no. Because it was just in a different format. You yeah. know, because there was segregation in Chicago in a, uh, to a certain degree. You know, you didn't go everywhere you wanted to Oh, no, there was there wasn't no degree. It was complete and utter Segre segregation. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, yeah. it reminds me of 1919. Yeah. The, the race ride with Eugene, yeah. the, I forget his name, when um, when he crossed that invisible barrier, yeah. that line in, the, yeah. in, the, in Lake Michigan, yeah. and uh, there was a riot. Right, yeah. Just because. The yeah. color, of, just because of the color. Of the yeah, game. yeah. Racism has always been in, in yeah. the north, and especially in Chicago. How did you deal with the racial tension of your childhood? Like, like most uh, young black kids during that time, you were taught, you know, say yes, sir, and no, ma'am. Really? Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah. And. Uh, and to look away. Look away. You didn't. You didn't look. Caucasian that was a direction. time we couldn't go into Marshall Field. Are you serious? Like you remember this? Oh yes, I. I yeah, I remember that. And if you went downtown, you had to show enough dress up. Are you your, serious? And your son to go to meeting clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Interesting. Oh, oh yeah. If you didn't say yes, sir, mm -hmm. to the to the white store owner when you went in to buy something. He would look at you and ask you, "What did you say?" Oh my God! Oh, I'm so serious. so it it's the same thing here as it was in the South, except that they knew how to throw throw a rock and hide their hand. You have to understand that uh, two of the world's greatest singers 
uh, raised uh, raised us. You know my mom and daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you couldn't find two better singers in the world. Uh, As a matter of fact, even if, I don't, if you could ask, well, there's very few people that, but uh, everybody loved to hear my daddy sing. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. When Even uh, as he started his church, singers would come by all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, a, just Albertina, all, uh, James, whenever he was in town. You know, the Jesse Dixon, uh, um, the J. Robert Bradley. Oh my God, that man can show enough sing. Well, that was my daddy's friend. You met the man. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. I'm so my my mother, know. and my mother was an operatic soprano. Yeah. She would break glasses around the house. Wait, wait, say that. Let's rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Did do what? Break glasses. That's some, she that's hit, some heavenly singing. Yeah, she would hit notes and glasses, and we'd run. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, you know, that's the way we'd have fun with her. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. We come back, we're going to delve into the Fountain of Life Baptist, Baptist Church, Church, and we're going to talk about that fantastic songwriter, Marvin Yancey, and then I must embrace you because I've called you, mm -hmm. but I get a chance now to look you eyeball to eyeball <laughs> Bless you all. and let you know how much those songs like, especially Lord, we pray for peace. Oh, let me go on a break before I start crying. Okay. Right now. Gospel Diaries. Now, it's, it was a, the guy has to be about 19 years old. He reached out to me. He's like, he said, man, is there any, is there anyone still alive from the Yancey family? Like, I, I'm fascinated with Marvin Yancey. So uh, I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to to delve into that that sub that subject that area there. Because <laughs> yeah. Marvin Yancey was so somebody singing. So my, Marvin, could, my I woke up every morning as uh, we grew up you know, brothers, mm -hmm. siblings. I woke up every morning to a phenomenon. Really? Oh yeah, and I knew that. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we all in the family knew that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marvin uh, was appendectious. He could use the left, right. He could draw you. Really? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he could, See, we need yeah, to hear this thing. Yeah, he mm -hmm. could draw, and he loved music. Really? Oh yeah, but we all did. Uh, my mama would, uh, my mom would wake us up to watch the uh, Eddie Dutton story. Okay. Or, or the Gershwin brothers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, she's, uh, uh, yeah, we would, anything musical, mm -hmm. we knew all about it. Or we, we, Yeah. Well, in a cold stone world as mm -hmm. we live in, and even then, mm -hmm. you know, music is the delight of the heart mm -hmm. for us as we struggle every day mm -hmm. going through. Mm -hmm. Uh, how, this tedious life, tedious. yeah, for for African American yes. people, yes. and uh, that's where we took rejoicing. Mm -hmm. That's where we en encumbered and embraced rejoicing when we were gathered around music, music. or song. <laughs> where words end, music uh -huh. music begins. We'll say that one more time. Where words end, uh -huh. music begins. My God. Yeah, yeah I like when you can, when you can't ex, uh, express it verbally, mm -hmm. you can always express it musically. Wow! And speaking of <clears throat> expressing something ver ver verbally, <laughs> yeah. you pen some amazing songs. Thank you. Well, yeah. writing for me is a point of contact with really? with my with my God. Really? Yeah. At what age did you find yourself? Thirteen. 
13? Yeah, I wrote my first song at 13. I what, never will forget remember, it. What was the name of the song? What uh, is the name of the song, rather? Oh, Lord, I thank you. That was my first song. Did you did you ever record that? No, we never. We, we sang it, my brother, sister, and I. We sang it, but we never did record it. But that. it's not too late, though. Never too late. Right. How was it yeah, good, good songs don't have funerals. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> what, Mari? It's you a mess. Yeah. Good songs don't have feelings. No, they don't. They never die. Marvin and I, Marvin and I, you have to understand, we were a team. We grew up, you know, and every day was spent somehow uh, at some interval during the day writing or singing, you know. And uh, we sang with uh, my father wherever he would go preach. We sang for him, you know, and so. We had a little group called the Founder Life Ensemble. Interesting. Did yeah. that predate the choir? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because that's where we are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That pre predated uh, predated the choir, uh, but uh, the choir Founder Life Choir was started under my mother, mother, okay. and then uh, a minister by the name of Reverend Johnny Ross mm -hmm. took over mm -hmm. uh, under under my father's leadership. Yeah. What year? Oh. Are we talking early uh, 60s? 60s? Marvin and I, we did a recording. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Such as I have, I give a, I give to thee. And that's the song he and I wrote. My sister wrote the other. Well, she adapted uh, and arranged uh, There Is Nobody Like Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's an adaptation of uh, Jackie Wilson. Produced uh, after we did that uh, Such As I Have, that 45 yes. LP which was uh, actually produced by uh, Albertina Walker and E. Rodney Jones. Really? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, and uh, they, f they fell in love with our choir, mm -hmm. and uh, of course the uh, genius of Marvin and the sound and his music playing, piano playing and all of that, they fell in love and they asked us to do a CD, I mean a 45, I and mean, that was the first one. So that one. would have been the first one, then 78. Yeah, okay. now, yeah. Now the first one, the 45, was introduced by James Cleveland. The first time we ever sang Lord, it. I gotta find this, Lord. Please, please, Lord, <laughs> you find this, Lord. <laughs> you find it. You just, uh, so I, 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 I got a copy. You do? Yeah. Would you do that for me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, the, first the first one, one. the first album that we never got, it never came see, out. See, see here we go. Now you bringing out something that see, yeah. I knew it come out. So, yeah. so there was another album that did. Yeah, not before come out. before the seventy eight. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Before that album, uh, we did an, uh, another album, and that was the album that I was just talking about. Uh, that E. Rodney Jones and uh, Albertina Walker okay. uh, financed and produced. Wow, no uh, Yeah, and we did it on uh, Harold Freeman's. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, yes. yeah, that label yes. on Indiana. Indiana, okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Okay, so let's what talk. was so interesting? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That E. Rodney Jones and, and Albertina Walker. Yes. And my father sang on there. He sang. He sang at the uh, arrangement of At the Cross. At the Cross. And at I the narrated cross. his sing the sing the song. At the Cross. At the Cross. Yeah. Where at I, last and did uh -huh. and then my, he was. No, 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 no. Give me the list. At last and did uh -huh. my Savior bless. Uh huh. I'm and listening. did my sovereign die. Mm -hmm. For he devoted a sacred head mm -hmm. to such a worm as I. Mm -hmm. Was it for for crimes that uh -huh. I have done? Stop it. <laughs> God, uh -huh. God, He grown upon the grown the tree, uh -huh. sacred. Yes, see, yes, no, <laughs> to me, and love beyond degree. Oh, At the cross. At the cross. At the cross. I love talking with you, wow. Maurice. Wow. You know about it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, I don't. I, I, he was fifty-seven years Jesus. old, young. Yeah, when he passed. Um. It was devastating for us. Marvin and I sat out at the hospital and in front of the hospital all night long. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. And, uh, but we had promised our father that we would continue his ministry at the church, mm. you know. And so um, Marvin had started playing at the church one Sunday when our musician, it was the Easter Sunday, got up and left, walked off. And Marvin got on the 
piano and started playing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. And I remember my father just crying that day, that Sunday. But my father was everything a father could ever be to uh, our family. Uh, he loved us. We loved him. But not only was he a father, but he was our religious leader. And he taught us uh, the word of God. And he and my mother had a theme in the sense that it was like what uh, what Jesus' mother said mm -hmm. uh, at the wedding. Come on now. He said, whatever he says, mm -hmm. do it. Do it. <laughs> wow, wow. So if you're going to get anything out of life, whatever the word says, do it. All right. <laughs> what, All right. Mary? Uh, my father, when he, my father became ill, you know, and my brother was already studying at the Moody Bible Institute. Interesting. Yeah, to okay. be, yeah, become a minister, uh -huh. and so uh -huh. uh, he asked Father would he take over the choir, yes, over the church. Yes. Yeah, my father did. Yeah, I was away at Wisconsin State University. Where was he studying? Uh, sociology. Yeah, and so they asked. Uh, my brother called me and said, "I can't do it without you." Really. And I, I won't do it without you. So you all were, you all had a bond. Yes. So I came back home mm -hmm. and worked with my brother with yeah. the church. Yeah. Yeah. Just to go to uh, bread basket. Oh, bread basket. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I used to try to get Marvin to go all the time. Yeah. My man, I ain't got time, man. To do that, man. Uh huh. And uh, my buddy. Mickey Warren, mm -hmm. I never will forget Mickey, because Mickey and I, uh, we produced the uh, Inez Andrews yeah, years yeah. ago yeah. Uh, while she was at Redeeming Church mm -hmm, of Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so I finally got Marvin to come, me and Mickey. We finally got Marvin to come to, to Bread Basket, and Reverend Jackson fell in love with Marvin, mm -hmm. and they both became, our family became real close. And from that, uh, uh, initial meeting uh, to uh, the Black Expo. That's where Marvin met his brother Chuck, and they began to write for Nat, Nat, uh, Natalie Cole. Mm. You arranged the song. For who? I'm a child of the king. Oh yeah, yeah. for for the push choir. Yes. How'd you know? <laughs> you know how'd yeah. you know? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, Marvin was the the uh, um, national director of Operation Push, right. music director. Yeah. He was over, yeah. yeah. So uh, they decided to do an album. Wow. And so I wrote one song, uh, Lost and Alone Child Without a Home. <laughs> you know, you kinda, your, your, your lyrics remind me of Dorothy. You know, you're real poetic with, in your approach. You yeah. know, cause I well, remember I've always time. loved, first of all, I've always loved books. Mm -hmm. So you're a bibliophile. Oh man, I I, work, I worked at the library for eighteen years. Really? Yeah, I was, and so I love I love the smell of books. And really? so my introduction, uh, and con and cocated with uh, growing up in a musical family, I love poetry. Okay. So I wrote poetry. Mm -hmm. I wrote hundreds of poems, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I used to just uh, read Longfellow. Beats and a bunch of other. Drink to me only with thine eyes. Shall I compare thee with a summer's day? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. And, sh and then I, I studied Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there was a president that was assassinated uh, after the Civil War, days after the Civil War came to a resolution. And uh, there was a famous poet there. He's actually, his name, uh, there's a gospel music choir director that shares the same name with him. And he wrote a very prolific Robeson. poem. No, 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 no. We're talking Robeson. about Walt Whitman. Oh, Captain Lord. Captain, <laughs> Captain, 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 Captain O'Kessler. Captain yes, O'Kessler. Oh, I've got to write up Like, how, what, was the birth, what was the birthing of songs like that? Like, when we did, first of all, you should know uh, no gospel record label would take us. Really? No. Interesting. No. 
we uh, enjoined with TK Production. That's the label that started. Uh, um, what's that genre of music? Uh, TK. TK. Uh, Van McCoy. Okay. Uh, KC and the Sunshine Band. Okay. They started disco. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the label yeah, that started yeah, disco. Yeah. And so Bobby Caldwell was an opening act for Natalie. Mm -hmm. And he and Marvin uh, began to talk about recording. And he was out of, uh, uh, he was an artist out of TK Productions. And that's how we got to do that first album with uh there has been a new setting of the sun with Christ in my life a new day has begun sorrow has ceased and uh hallelujah is on there and then the second album we came back with was sign me up okay okay for the christian jubilee wow. now i'll tell you how that song came please, about please please <laughs> come here my brother and I have a saying, we, when it comes to church, we didn't join it. We was born in it. You were born in it. Yeah. Okay. But we were always illuminated by seeing people who came to Christ. Uh -huh. That was just, for me, that was just, uh, when you see, you know, I wrote this song that says, I've seen uh, the sick get well with a story to tell. I've seen the last be first a, and a sinner man join church. That's a looming to see somebody who didn't know anything about Christ, but come to a service and the, the choir sings and the word is preached and then they give their life over to Christ. That's when I said, sign me up. Sign me up for that. Yes. Huh? Uh huh? Have you ever, you've been in a service where uh -huh. that has happened and you've seen somebody Jesus. just give over to Christ? Huh? What? Sign me up for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's illuminating. That's, a, that, that, that's life yeah. changing. Wow. Okay. That's the wonderment of God's goodness and, mm. his, and what his just being in the company that he mm. keeps will do for you. Change your life. Wow, man, that was interesting. So, so then we went on uh, the heavy load, the uh -huh. second album. Uh -huh. Now, heavy load, you and your brother co wrote that. Yeah, and I produced his, produced his, produced that album. How does how did that come about? That's heavy it. load. Yeah. Mom had had that heavy load, and he had been telling me, man, I just feel this is a song for now, because there's so much turmoil, you know, and heaviness in our community. And you know, if you're going to write gospel music, it should it should you know, like the pulpit. You know what that stands pulpit mm -hmm. for pulling people up out of the pit. Listen, I'm about to run. Uh, I'm about to run. What? No, but that's what is that's why they call it a pulpit. Mm -hmm. It's for pulling people out of, the, and that's what gospel music should do: pull people up, huh? And so we just wanted people to know that you might have decided to give up, but hold on, huh? huh? Just hold on, cause your heavy load is it's gonna get lighter. Wow! <laughs> now listen, now I must ask you this: now with all of that inspiration just loaded in these songs that you all was just presenting to the world, yeah. you know, how did the church respond to Reverend Marmory Yancey when he began to? Step in the secular world. Ah, this the hypocrisy, <laughs> hypocrisy okay. of it all, you know. Uh, first of all, it had to be dealt with at home, mm -hmm. in our family, and with my mother and father. Oh, wow. She, she had something to say? Oh, really? are you kidding me? Mom? Mom? Wow. Yeah, well, my, my daddy was the head of the family, but she was the next. So try moving your head without your neck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it was uh, it was a hard pill for my father, first of all, to swallow. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. But he and Chuck, now Chuck Jackson, that's Jesse Jackson's brother. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who he wrote all of those songs with, with for Natalie. Well, I'm gonna let you in on something. They were really supposed to be for Aretha. 
Anyway. <laughs> the hard pill was for my father mm -hmm. to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, because mom was pastoring mm -hmm. at the time. And so uh, it was discussed, and the question was asked, mm -hmm. you know, did y'all listen? Did when you and mom went on a date, did y'all listen to uh, Alex Bradford? I'm <laughs> I'm too close, or did y'all listen to Sam Cook, darling? You send me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the question was asked. Yeah. yeah, and so. Uh, uh, Music has to do with love. Yeah. Wow. And so they wrote love songs. Yeah, yeah. And they were a dy dynamite duo. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pray for peace. I must <laughs> you give, love that I, song. I, I really do. I give credit to <laughs> yeah. my, my, my father, Bishop Troy Garner. Like, he had taught the choir a song, and I, I learned that he mm. learned it from. Uh, well, he originally learned it from Bishop Chris Randall Johnson. Yeah. But uh, he was a part of uh, L. Andre Patterson's choir. Andre, yeah. they actually recorded. But let's talk about the development of that song because there's something. It, it started yeah. out with me writing, Lord, we pray for peace. That's a, and we pray for the, uh, each man to be led by thy hand. That, that was all I had gotten. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote, a verse to that, mm -hmm. but that was the, uh, how can I put it? That was the core of the song. Okay. Chris, who was a musician uh, at Fountain. Uh, oh, Chris was at Fountain, and then he went to Spivy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's Chris, Chris, yeah, that's okay. where Chris. Uh, no wonder he took okay. Yeah, he was under the tutorship of my brother Marvin. Oh, for years, oh. yeah. But we knew their whole family from the from Cabrini Green. But any as yes. as it goes, just you know, move on with dispatch. Chris embellished it mm -hmm. with the opening. Yeah, he put color to it. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for peace. Lord, we <laughs> yeah, pray. I wish I could yeah. yeah. So, see, at Fountain of Life, choir rehearsal was like a workshop. Yeah. A musical workshop, mm -hmm. and so Chris came up with that uh, uh, opening. Wow. Well, brother Kevin, man, I think that we 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 had our job cut out for us <laughs> in the first but, place. But yeah. we, but we, I think we we made we made good for what we had for the yeah. time that we had. So uh, yeah. I want to tell you, man, thank you so much. Wait, no, no, answer that about the part Morton, like. How, were you the actual executive producer for that album? Well, we, we, Capital Records. Well, we started a company, Curtis Mayfield and I, and and a fellow by the name of Pete Landfair. Mm -hmm. We started a record label called Gospel Capital Records. Gospel Capital. Yeah, and uh, after Curtis, uh, I had that infraction where on stage in New York, where he was paralyzed from the neck down. Rev. Fairchild's consented. Oh my goodness. Rev. Fairchild's consented to come aboard and become a partner in the uh, label. And he and uh, Rev. Paul Morton were friends. Of course, I knew Paul Morton's brother years before. James? Uh, no, it was another, they have another brother. I can't think of it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so uh, he knew about the Yancey family and the, mu the musical career. Mm -hmm. And so when he was at, and, and asked to join our record label, he, he uh, gladly submitted the uh, Healing Hands album to us. Okay. We are here at uh, uh, the church pastor by a good mm -hmm. friend of mine, Reverend Reggie McCracklin, who, uh, Helped me when I produced Inez Andrews' yes. album, and his choir was the background backup choir for the whole album, and they were just—he was wonderful, and they was wonderful. And I also want to just say, man, I love this church. This is gorgeous. It is. <laughs> this That's is amazing. Gorgeous. Yeah, you talking yeah. about the Just for Me album? Yeah, that was the, his choir. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
Now listen, as I say always. <laughs> Are you tired? Are you just no, sleeping? Stop it. <laughs> Love on someone, and trust me, you will change your life. You never know that smile that you wear just may be the ingredient that someone may need to put down their gun and live another day. All right, I'll, until next time, until we meet again <laughs> on the other side. God bless you.